Up first this evening, spend $40 billion more to cushion the effects of rising prices. That's the call from the opposition to the government this evening as Jamaicans grapple with an increase in the price of goods and services. Opposition leader Mark Golding was making his contribution to the budget debate in Parliament today. Andrea Chisholm now joins us live. Andrea? Well, Janella, the opposition leader is forecasting some dark days ahead for many Jamaicans as the price of fuel, food, electricity, water and many other items have gone up. Recall that inflation for January was roughly 10%. For that reason, Mark Golding responded directly to the finance minister, drawing back for the warning lyrics used when Dr. Nigel Clark opened the budget debate. With those prices going up, the people are facing lick after lick after lick. Push on the lick, Prime Minister. Push on the crisis, I say. Kiasa, me never did I warn you. You control the purse strings. When those strings are loosened, Mark Golding wants $40 billion more to help vulnerable persons, including those on the PATH program. With real GDP growth of 3.5% projected for the coming fiscal year, this expenditure that I am proposing would not worsen the debt-to-GDP ratio. Plus, he says the government plans to collect roughly $99 billion more in taxes in the next fiscal year. The revenue estimates show government hopes to collect almost $671.5 billion, up from the projected $572.5 billion for this fiscal year ending March. And so Mr. Golding argues they can afford to spend more than the $2 billion to target those mainly affected by high fuel prices. With that in mind, the opposition has adjusted its proposal for the government to remove the tax collected for Jamaica's oil hedge program. We are proposing that for the duration of the inflation crisis, the government caps the ad valorem SCT on fuel at an oil price of $67.50 US per barrel, and also the equivalent for the price of LNG so that prices of those crucial commodities that go above the budgeted price do not result in higher taxes on fuel. Turning to the Students' Loan Bureau promises to make tertiary education more accessible. We will reconfigure the loan structure used by the Student Loan Bureau, capping monthly payments at a reasonable percentage, not more than 15% of the borrower's actual income. The Minister of Finance announced last year that only one guarantor will be required by the Student Loan Bureau going forward. That was a step in the right direction, but it does not go far enough. The PNP government, when next in office, will abolish altogether the requirement of finding a guarantor to access student loans. In the meantime, Mr. Golding also wants the government to increase the tax-free value on personal imports from 50 U.S. to 150 U.S. dollars. Kingston Wharves should also cut the cost of clearing barrels by 50% to $3,250. Now, a controversy is brewing about plans for new banknotes. You will also recall that Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark unveiled a new design when he opened the budget debate. The opposition is not supporting the move to put two former prime ministers, the PNP's Michael Manley and the JLP's Edward Siaga, on the upcoming $2,000 bill. The government chose not to consult with the opposition on the design of the new notes, even though... The proposed design involves powerful symbolism affecting some of our great political leaders. If a new $2,000 note is needed, that is fine. Put Mr. Siaga on the $2,000 note. But leave Michael Manley on the $1,000 note. All right, so we've heard from the finance minister, from the opposition spokesman on finance. We heard today from uh, Mr. Golding. What's next? All right, so on Thursday, Janella, the prime minister himself, Andrew Holness, is expected to make his contribution to the budget debate, and we'll see what will feature when he speaks. Thank you so much, Andrea.